Okay, so now, hopefully, completed that step. I didn't show it at the end. I think you have to go in, I guess, and do mark is done. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one. Now, on this step, this is going to be fun because I have a clean install and there has been some changes with VS Code and Git and GitHub. So I'm going to learn as we go, as an example to show you in case you run into this. Okay, so what we're going to do is clone. So what do we mean by cloning? So right now, when you created your GitHub repos inside of our course organization out on GitHub, and I know that's a lot of words, right? But you created these repos that are out on the web. So now what we're going to do is we're going to clone them, which basically is like a copy but it's cloning means we're making a duplicate of that locally so that then when we make changes, you can do the last step in this process, which is to then push code changes to GitHub and they show up here or here, depending on what part we're working on. More about that particular part later, but let's start here. Let's go ahead and we're gonna clone the first one we're going to clone the public one and just have it up and ready. So I thought before we got started, though, what I would do is down in VS Code, I was playing a little bit after the last video because I told you I like to have my terminal again. Let me just say here, if you don't see it right when you open it up, you have a new terminal. Uh, defaults to PowerShell. And I noticed if I right click, I could say or was it here? Yeah, was it? Oh, see, that's so funny. Now I don't see it. Oh, there it was. So when I click on the plus, I can say select the default profile. And really what that means is select what you want to use for your integrated um, command line in VS Code. Is I can say select PowerShell. And what that will do now, I think if I just kill the panel and I come back, let's see if it does what I think it's supposed to do. And it does default now to bash. Again, I don't require it. It's just the way I'm going to have it set up for mine. Okay. All right. So the first step we're going to do before we do any cloning is that I have students uh, create two repos locally. I don't, in this case, recommend using the clone repository set up here. Um, but obviously I can't tell you how to do it. I'm going to show you, I think the best way to do it, because honestly, you want to learn how to do these things at the command line, because it is just good experience. Anyone that does any kind of development over time has to learn to get used to command line. Okay. So as, oh, getting ready for the command line, if I type P to, uh, PWD here, it shows me the path I'm on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say mkdir make dir make directory and I'm going to type this which I have in canvas. This is the recommended recommended directory name 93 uh, fa21. Now, the reason is you might be taking some of my other classes. You might be but inside of this folder. Now, this is not a repo yet. This is just a folder, okay? Now, I could have also used the make folder here, okay? I could have totally done that. I didn't want to. Uh, I would have had to navigate to my home directory, and I was like, eh, I can do it on the command line. Now, if I do pwd again, or ls, I can see that that folder is setting right here. And if I do cd, sorry, cd, change directory, and then type c, uh, it, tab, you actually have to type out the whole thing. I'll show you other ways as we get into this to do it, but in this case, good. Now I have my PWD, right, here. Now, the other thing you probably want to do at this point, though, is go ahead and go File, Open Folder, okay, not Create Folder, and notice the interface for that is here as well, right? I want to actually open on my C drive. Is it under User? No, under C drive, there we go, under users, under my directory, my, what we call your home, that folder for now. Okay, I'm going to open this. Oh, actually, it's not there. Oh, interesting. 
because this is the sub the directory that's going to hold my repos vs code is saying hey do you want to open something in there and i'm like no i just want to open a folder let's see if it just lets me do it here maybe a little better so i'm going to go here it's probably a quicker way somewhere here but and then i'm going to do that select folder and then good it does it is out as well so that's a that's a good thing to realize is that I probably was clicking opening a file over there and I'm going to say trust. This is something I saw come up in a minute ago. I'm going to say go said trust this folder. OK, and all that does is change to where it doesn't do restricted. OK, so now we haven't cloned anything, but now we're actually ready to clone. And this is where, again, this will be interesting because on this particular uh, install, I've never done this step and a few things could come up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go open up my terminal. I'm going to say new terminal window. It is bash, which is awesome. I'm in the directory here, uh, my directory that now I'm going to clone. So actually, I'm going to do this. I think I can just make this a little bigger. Yep, make it just a little bigger. So it's a, I should have done that before. Again, I'm not going to use the interface here. I'm going to type git clone. And now while that's open, I can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to run over to GitHub. I'm going to say clone. And in this case, we're going to do HTTP clone. And you can just copy that. This is copy. This is cloning first the um, local. Good. Sorry, the public repo. I was just reading and talking. Sometimes a problem. Come back here, right? And then I'm going to, and by the way, as soon as I hit uh, paste there, or right click, it automatically came in. Okay. So in this case, it didn't ask me interestingly enough and i thought it would and maybe it'll ask me when we go to push the next one which would be fine to log in uh, sometimes and this might be the new interface that might be the helper uh, that i already installed when i installed uh, vs code right but if you do get the login here right it's probably because you didn't have a step done before or it may be that we get it when we actually go to um, push code. But notice what happened here is that I actually got a new folder. Now in this case it looks like a folder, just a regular folder on my drive. And if I actually do this, um, actually let me just open up the file manager. Again, this is not really any different on the Mac side, except you're using the finder and some other things. But in this case, let's see, I go here, I go to user, I need to actually set this up as a default, right? And then I don't have this under any of my standard um, directories for Windows, but I set up the folder and then I can see that that is the folder, but really what I know is it's a repo. Now, how do I know this? I'll show you in a minute how to find this out, but I just want you to see those two files we created when we did create the a repo out on GitHub now are on my local system. Okay, cool. I just want you to see that. So let me come back here. And now I can actually click here and I can open these in my editor. Okay, so that is the uh, markdown file that I had um, when I or was created when I had that out on GitHub. And the other thing I really like to do is hit auto save here. And I'm just going to show you, if you don't hit autosave, uh, let me just turn it off to show you, what happens is you get this little dot. And this little dot that I'm pointing at right here indicates that the file has been modified but not saved, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the GitHub re the workflow in a minute, but just the editor itself will first save it as soon as you modify code. And I think that's a wonderful way to get that done, okay? Uh, the other thing you can do, notice uh, if I wanted to change into this directory, and this is something you're going to see as we move into uh, actually running some command line stuff and doing node and some other things. But if I do pwd, I'm in that 
kind of that holding directory that we had before. And so what I can do um, is I could do ch CD change again, but there's another way that I think is much easier because we'll end up creating several directories inside of this repo that just looks like a folder or a directory. So what you can do here is you can just say um, open an integrated terminal and then what that does is it automatically changes to that folder location within the repo for you rather than do you have to navigate. But I can also tell you it is good experience for you to know how to move around on the command line as well. And remember I showed you that little trick before um, where, and by the way, if I wanted to back out one, I could do that, right? If I wanted to change, I could type CIT. Oh, actually I'm in that folder, so that wouldn't make sense, but just for CD, CIT, and as soon as I find enough matching characters, if it finds multiples, it'll do that as well. Okay. Okay. So this step is really something I, I was interested to see how uh, VS Code would handle this. I think that helper install actually ended up getting the credentials off of my install, but this could be a little different for you, right? So again, this is where asking for help before you run into something, that way I can at least give you some input. Now on the Mac, this should be really, let me just move to my Mac real quick. Here it is, right? So on the Mac, um, like I've already cloned stuff here. I use that same directory uh, folder name here. Uh, the, direct, the repo looks a little different because I had done it before. Um, but again, turning on autosave is a good idea. Setting your default in this case, as before, I use, right? You can select default. You can also select the settings as well. So part of that should be no different using get clone and then cloning in it there. Um, on the Mac side, um, I've done this and haven't run into any issues here either yet. But I think when we go to do the next step, we'll have to just chat about how the new system is set up. Because if you don't, there's actually an extender extension now for VS Code, it was actually trying to install it that actually would handle my credentials. Because here's what, uh, and I'll just leave you with this thought, is that um, Git uh, and GitHub, so let's actually just say GitHub password uh, deprecation. So what they started stopping uh, used to be that you logged in with your regular password that you use for your username. But what happened is that became insecure. So what they started doing was they, I think they're called tokens, uh, replace password with tokens. Yeah. So I think this is going to come up in our next step, but I just want to let you know in case you run into it here, um, there is uh, various ways. Basically, you can go into your GitHub, uh, your Git, and uh, look at the pass the token and use that as your password locally. So we didn't run into it here. I was kind of thinking we might uh, when we went to clone, but I think what it did is that little helper thing we installed handled it for us, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it just is. Okay, so at this point, we've gotten through um, several steps now, right? So check this out. We're actually now at this point, if you've gotten through this, mark this is done, and we get to go to the last step, which I... Um, <laughs> I love this step because this is actually now where you start to see how we use all this setup that we've been doing. Okay. I'll talk to you soon.